So guys, I'm Miss Badger. I'm going to talk you through what I would like you to do in today's art taster session. So if you're thinking of taking art A-level, then you need to know that for A-level, you get to pick your own coursework theme, which is really exciting. It means that hopefully you'll be really passionate about what you're doing and everyone's work will be completely different. So I thought today we would spend a bit of time always practicing this, thinking about what you might be interested in and what path that might take you down. So... I've got some examples of previous students' topics. Now, if you're sat there thinking, I have no idea what I'm interested in or what I want to be doing, for today, just pick at random, have a look through here, pick one of these out, or maybe you already have a really good idea of what you're interested in. Um, previous students sometimes think about what they want to do in the future. So I've got architecture on there. We've had a few architect students who knew they wanted to do that. So they studied that at A-level. Um, or maybe you want to do something that's more personal to you to do with a personal experience you've had. So the list here, we've got nature, fantasy, gender, illness, the mind, inequality, privacy, dystopia, nihilism, architecture, weapons, violence, the future, destruction, belief, religion, boundaries, social media, symbols and motifs, the mundane, creation and loss of control. Now I've just selected a few from a vast array of different topics that students have studied in the past. You'll notice that they're all relatively vague, maybe vague is not the right word, but they're quite wide reaching. You don't want to narrow it down too much is the main thing because you are spending a year on it. But for today, it doesn't really matter because you're already spending under an hour on it. So pick whatever you fancy. Um, what I'd like you to do then is spend maybe 10 minutes picking your theme and picking your artwork that you would like to look at today. So you're going to pick one piece of artwork and then you're going to spend some time planning a piece of artwork inspired by that artwork that you have chosen. So step one, as I said, spend 10 minutes picking a piece of artwork that stands out to you. When you're choosing it, consider why you're choosing it. Why does it stand out to you? Is it the subject matter? Is it the meaning, the colour, the technique? To pick your artwork, feel free to use any research method you like. You might use Instagram or Pinterest. Um, I've put two websites on there that you could use, but it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong. I am going to click on this website just to show you um, how you might search for something to do with your theme. You are all, I'm sure, very computer literate, so I'm sure you don't need this showing to you, but just in case, let's say you wanted, so I'm on This Is Colossal. Um, this is one of my favourite art websites. I think it's great for really innovative and risk-taking artwork. So let's say I want to look at architecture as my theme. I would type in architecture to the search bar. Wait for it to load using my slow Wi-Fi. And here we go. We've got pieces of artwork chosen on this blog to do with architecture and then as you scroll through them some might stand out to you more than others and hopefully you'll find something that is up your street and links well to your theme. So going back to our slides that's step one once you've chosen your artwork um, spend 10 minutes properly researching that artwork so write down everything you can find out about it. Your writing doesn't need to be a paragraph or even a sentence today. It can just be bullet points, um, but just find out as much as you possibly can. So when was it made? Why was it made? Who made it? What was their background? Who are the intended viewers? What is it made out of? What's the subject matter? Um, if the subject matter is humans, who are those people? What are they doing? Uh, what's the shape, the texture, the colour, the form, the composition? There's so many questions you could ask about an artwork. So try and answer as many questions as you possibly can and just write a whole big list of things to do with that artwork. And then step three, I'm going to ask you to spend 20 minutes planning a piece of artwork inspired by this artist. So obviously you're not actually going to make this artwork, but you're going to sketch it out. You're going to plan it, use annotations, use drawings, um, can be drawn in pen or pencil, whatever you've got to hand is fine. And I want you to take inspiration from the artwork you have chosen. So that could be any part of the artwork. It doesn't have to be, you know, what it looks like necessarily. It could be the meaning behind it or the intention behind it. It could be a small part of what it looks like. You might just take inspiration from the colour palette or from the composition and nothing else. That's fine. So think about what do you want to take inspiration from? Do not directly copy it. That is plagiarism is something you want to avoid. You want to be original, risk-taking, imaginative, but also you want to take inspiration from other people's work. You don't exist in a vacuum. There is all this amazing artwork around you. So take some inspiration, but obviously don't just directly copy it. Don't plagiarise it. 
Um, you don't have to think about using the same media as your artist either. Let's say you chose a photography artist today. That doesn't mean you have to plan a piece of photography. You could plan something, I don't know, that might be the opposite to photography, something really three-dimensional that is inspired by a photography piece of artwork. So the choice is yours. Don't feel narrowed down by the artwork you've chosen. You only need to take a small amount of inspiration from it. Um, and as I said, you'll not be making this artwork. I mean, you're welcome to. Feel free to go ahead and make it. But this is more of an exercise in creative thinking than in making the actual piece. So try and think creatively, try and sketch out ideas. Maybe you'll come up with five or six ideas rather than just the one. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so once you've done that task, I just want to talk through the, the reason I've asked you to do that. As I said already, you get to choose your own theme. So thinking about that now is a great place to start. Um, in terms of further research or further work to do before you start the course, if you're interested in this, I recommend you really thoroughly explore anything that is available to you in terms of other artists' work. So that might be their website, it might be blogs like I've shown you, it might be gallery websites like the Tates or the Royal Academy or the National Gallery, um, it might be art newspapers or art magazines or I mean everything is online now so you don't even have to order any of them, you can just access them all online. Obviously if we were in school you would have full access to our magazines and our books and hopefully that will happen again in the future but for now use the internet, it's there, use it, research as much as you possibly can. I also recommend setting up a Pinterest board of images and artwork that inspires you and then you've got a visual collection of things that you like and things that might inspire you going forward. So that's my top tip for further research to do with this starter lesson. The other thing I want to say to you is practice. So if you want to prepare yourself for your A-level, then your, my best advice is to practice as much as possible. That doesn't necessarily mean drawing. It's whatever your thing is, whatever you like, whatever you're good at. We're going to talk about this a lot, but everyone has got their own strengths and weaknesses in art. So it's about figuring out what are your strengths and then practicing them as much as you can, becoming an expert in that area. If you don't know what your thing is or what your strength is, then try out lots of different things and try and figure it out. Use some time now to practice and think, okay, what do I like? What am I good at? What am I not so good at? So some ideas of how you might practice, I'm sure you've got lots of your own ideas, but if you're struggling, um, something I like to do, I don't know about you, but I find if I haven't done a drawing in a while, the first drawing I do when I come back to it, it's generally not very good, or it takes me quite a while to get back into it. Um, drawing is something that if you practice it regularly, you do improve very quickly. So perhaps maybe not a daily drawing, if that seems too daunting, but drawing as frequently as possible is a really good way to keep up your drawing practice. Um, drawing might not be your thing though, remember art doesn't just have to be about drawing, so if drawing isn't your thing then don't do a daily drawing, do daily photography um, or something else that is your strength. So the other things I've got on here, pick a subject matter that you want to get really good at, so that could be portraits or animals or architecture and practice. Find tutorials online and follow along. Most professional artists or a lot of professional artists now do tutorials on YouTube. They share their skills with you. So find one or find an Instagram artist that you really admire and look at their tutorials or their step-by-step -step guides and follow along with them. Have a go. Um, you can practice photography. Find guides online to different photography techniques, look at different editing apps, different software. If you've got access to Photoshop, then have a go at that. Um, something I've not put on here, but it's just occurred to me is that digital art is a really good thing to be practicing at the moment as well, because we're all inside a lot of the time with our devices. There are so many different digital drawing apps and art apps. Um, a lot of them are free as well, so do a bit of research. But if you want some advice on any of this, feel free to send me an email and I can give you some more tips. Um, practice different painting techniques, explore using mixed media, so combining different materials together or working on unusual materials like recycled objects, just cardboard, if you're getting a lot of Amazon deliveries at the moment, take that cardboard apart, use it to create some artwork. Um, practice using perspective in artwork, that's a really key one actually, and kind of no matter what artwork you do, perspective is really, really important, just as proportion is really important. So I, I really recommend that one. Um, try creating sculptures out of 
various things you might have around the house like gardening wire maybe you've got clay or recycled objects that you could glue together to make some kind of artwork or creating collages from newspapers from books or from magazines so researching artists like I said it's a great way to figure out what you like what your taste is what inspires you and practicing is a great way to figure out what your thing is what your strength is so those are my top two recommendations going forward from this taster session Okay, I wanted to end this session with some visual examples, because if we were in school, you would be surrounded by artwork, you'd be surrounded by previous students' artwork, the walls are covered in artwork, we'd probably get some artwork out to show you. So it felt very odd creating a taster session without having any visual work. So I'm going to end this just by talking you through a student sketchbook. Hopefully you can then see why this taster session was relevant and how it would be useful going forward um, when taking inspiration from artists. So hopefully it's a good stepping stone to the course. So here is a previous student sketchbook. The topic is change and stability. And already you can see there is a lot of skill being shown on these pages. Really, really intricate drawing combined with printing as well, spray painting. So we've got mixed media we've got technical drawing ability with a good use of perspective um, and a, a lot of detail as well a lot of accuracy and detail moving on we go to a mind map so thinking about a theme what might link to that theme what avenues could we go down what artists could we look at we have a project proposal some primary source photography some visual recording and here we go we have some artist inspiration so a trip to the Tate Modern looking for artwork to inspire this student's project and you can already see that they found some artwork that is clearly very relevant to what they're looking at based on what we've seen so far. And then we have the first artist that this student chose to take inspiration from. So we've got imagery of their work in the sketchbook. And then we have got some of the artist analysis. So this is the kind of thing you would be creating from those bullet points and that list of research that you would do about your artist. And you can see it's presented in a really interesting way. And then we have some visual work that's inspired by the artist. With some annotations. And we have a larger piece of inspired work. So this would be the equivalent of what you guys are planning today. So a piece of artwork that has taken inspiration from the artist, but is not a direct copy. It's not plagiarism. It's more imaginative and risk taking than that. It's different, but we can see the links still. We can see the inspiration. And here is a much clearer image of that piece of work. So you can see it's a sculptural piece of work that the student has made themselves inside this found suitcase. Um, built to look like a, de a decaying or destroyed building and there's incredible amounts of attention to detail. All of this is handmade by the student. And here we go. And actually this piece was just chosen to be in um, the summer exhibition at the Royal Academy, which is an amazing achievement by this student. And as a school, we're, we're very impressed. We've actually had four students get into the Royal Academy exhibition this year, which is amazing. And this is one of the pieces that was chosen. And if we go forward, he then chooses a second artist and it continues so on. Now this is when lockdown began. So the work becomes a little bit more digital and we see it all through photography. But as you can see, taking inspiration from an artist again, incorporating elements of the style of the artist and then this is where we're up to.